Hello and welcome everyone to the last day of the PPL for this week. It is going to be another North American day with one set that I think is going to be huge and one set that honestly could cause a little bit of an upset. But before we get into that, uh -huh. my name is Gormizer. Bumpkin. And joining me here is, is going to be Rain Day and Pretty Hair you once again. You wore your October outfit. Your if Halloween. I don't have the jacket, I'm the great pumpkin. You guys pumpkin. are both looking a little spooky today. Ooh. You could be the Count. Yeah, mm. yeah, I could be. The Count. Da. The Count. Uh, we need more black vampires out a there. A nice man. smoke. The That's it. That's Some all representation, I got. man. Representation is good, obviously. Diversity. Um, all good things. Equal wages. <laughs> I'm about it. Do you have anything to say, Gore? Not or are able you to tackle those. With silence? We're, we're not I, I like tackling that those issues today. We're going to be tackling the PPL. Those aren't issues. And the, uh, well, Diversity no, they are. and equal wages. That's not an no, issue. They're, they're not issues, but there are <laughs> issues with that in America, if that makes sense. There are issues with that in America, but I'm saying it's not exactly. an issue. And that's what I'm saying. We'll tackle, <laughs> we can't tackle... The whole of it here. I don't want to tackle anybody. It's this just, is Palin's not we, football. We have 10 minutes. Gormizer. Gormizer. It is going to be very difficult to try and break through, but we do have G2 and I Envy have liquid. going up first. <laughs> it's tea this time. It's Friday. Now it's easy. It's definitely Friday. Yes. <laughs> the more silent he is, the more silent I am. So he found out that it works to, to turn me off a little bit. Just a little bit. See, it works just a little bit. Either way, it's going to be a battle for the top. <laughs> Both G2 and Envy at this point are pretty much confirmed for HRX as far That's as right. things go. Mm -hmm. But number one seed is what they're kind of looking at. If Envy lose here, I think they have to lose a couple sets for G2 to be able to actually completely overtake them and confirm it with the way things go. But the biggest question for today is just can this G2 reunited beat Envy, who has gone undefeated? I think so. And so I have two sides of the coin here. Uh, G2 Esports, I think, can do it. I think Bodies Coming Back looked fine. In fact, it looked really good. And I think talking with Sakyle today, doing for an interview for uh, next week, I think it's going to be uh, a nice transition that they feel much better as a team with. They're a family. They're a group of guys. They are buddies. And so when all of them are, are there, it's a difference than when one dude's gone. It feels like the, the pack's not all together. But on the other hand, MetaPusher tweeted about the matches today, so I'm uh, feeling pretty <laughs> confident in Envy's performance. Great Skinnergy. Let's see if that's enough for bodies today. That's what I've got to say. Since no Bomb King is available, which is something that we kind of, I, I think initially this week, that was our assumption that maybe he was going to be able to show up. We found out no. Do you think this kind of set will go down to the DPS where it's going to be like kind of rock monkeys versus bodies? Or do you think it's going to be random noob and whatever blaster play that G2 can pull out? Do you think it comes down to who has the deeper blaster pool? I don't think either of these teams are going to let Drogos through at any point. We might see a willow or two, but I would be uh, I would be very surprised if the Dragon did make it through today. Beyond Blasters, though, I think Evil Eye is a little bit better on Blasters, but I think off Blasters on like your Cassie and stuff like that, I actually like Random Noob a little bit more. You know, I actually have a counterpoint to that, and I'm curious to see how it turns out because I think... G2 Esports are really bad at calling people's bluffs. I've seen them do it at LAN. I've sat in the room with Sakaio when he said, well, we just said, let's give him a Koa. Let's see how it works out. <laughs> and they lost so hard with that result. I think they're going to let Drogos through, but I don't know if G2 is going to get it. I think Envy will be able to get Drogos today. Do you think Pip is going to play a big role? That's one of the blasters. I think we've seen Random Noob go to in the past. It's something we've seen G2 go to in the past. But do you mm. think that's going to be a blaster role they try to pick up, or is he just going to go unpicked again? Well, if G2 pick it up, it'll go to Vex, right? If it And it, that's probably the only place I could see it going to at this point with Bodies and Evil Eye. Neither of them really play a ton of pip. And if it goes to Envy, though, it probably will be Random Noob, and they probably will be playing that Catalyst style and bringing it for the damage. Yeah, we saw Mr. Hayes a little early on once uh, kind of the season kicked off for the second time that, uh, you know, he played this this Pip style. Pip was actually one of the best healers uh, to start out kind of our land season for a while and then fell off. A lot of other champions got introduced like Fury and things like that. But I think at the end of the day, I think we're going to see more of a mega potion from Vex versus at all on Envy. I don't know if they're going to they're going to bring that out, but I'm always a big fan of Catalyst. I hope that shows up. With Pip being a fringe pick, do you think that we might see Envy go for something else? Maybe like a Shaolin that they used to go to a lot for Rock Monkey? Or do you think, I think this is going to be most of yeah. keep it towards Cassie? I think Recurve Shaolin could come out. I, I think he likes that. Um, it could. I don't think it will because there's there's not enough focus. There's not enough bands going out on, on his champions right yeah. now. He's not going to be forced to play it. Yeah, it depends on the cast. The Cassie and the Leon are really big conversation pieces. You would expect that they'll both be available to be at least one on each side. But if weird draft of a Leon ban, a Cassie pickup early from G2, 
that could throw Rock Monkey into a pinch where he maybe the shot line shows Honestly, up. Andro could be big in this set today, yeah. too. If yeah. both bodies and Rock are trying to gun for it. Mm -hmm. Depends on the maps, too, mm -hmm. but we'll see. We could absolutely end up seeing a shift away from what has been kind of like the staple frontline bands towards having something like a Cassie Lee on Drogos, and then you have to reach a little deeper into your pocket to be able to match what the other team is going to be able to grab, especially if you leave Khan, Makoa, and Nara all on the board. Yep. But it's not the only set that I think is going to matter. One set that I think frontlines are still going to be predominantly banned is going to be SK and Splice. And my question for that one, it's kind of battle of the bottom. SK, even if they get a win, it doesn't really do much for them in terms of leafing the standings. But do you think Splice is as good as they kind of received themselves or perceived themselves at the beginning? They came in week one, looks pretty good. They week did. two, it looks fantastic. They did. And then where are they now? I think because of what they are, and they're not playing for much, admittedly, but like SK have something to play for. Whereas mm. at this point, I don't know if Splice have really much in this one, to be honest with you, I think SK, because this could be their only chance to, to realistically grab a win this split, it is probably something that will motivate them to grab today. I think today we will see Splice play with some relaxation, and I think that's what both these teams need. Just chill out. You know, I think SK, Dethroner, and these guys still tweeting, I'm going to give my best and do all this. You know, the split's basically over, and I think this is just about testing what can you do to improve for HRX. So maybe there's some guys like like Dethroner and Payne specifically trying to prove their worth, but I think Splice in general, after talking to Vayne, just wants to prep for land. That's the most important part. So that's what today will be about. So for SK, you were saying not only are they maybe looking for their first win, but even if they can come through and get a win, like what what does it mean for them in the future? I mean, this is a team that has been changing a lot over the last couple of splits. They've been at the bottom every single time. They haven't really been able to make that climb or beat another team. If they can find a win here or if they don't, what does that mean for their team? I think their fate sealed until land. I think nothing means anything for these teams, honestly, until yeah. then. Because at this point, if we were cutting it off or going into next year, say what happens, roster swaps are necessary. I think that's a question better answered by SK Gaming during the, the preliminary round interviews or something like that, really. They're the ones that need to answer that question. What does this mean for you guys? What's the plan? Where are you going from this nearly winless split? Yeah. Speaking of prelims, and this is something we'll go into more, I think, on not only this next eSports week, we'll be even one after that, but... The teams from the PGS have all qualified. Everyone from the PGS and the, the global scene has already gotten their spots as far as the prelims are concerned. Seeding is still kind of up for grabs overall through the PPL, but both of these teams are going down there. There's no way for them to make top two. Do they have any teams they should be worried about? Like, are there PGS teams that can take them down? I think so, dude. Yeah, probably. 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 Some good PGS teams out there. Yeah, you look at SSG, they've beaten G2 on land, yeah. right? Like, yeah. they... Uh, Historically, I would tell you they would smoke SK or Splice, and I, you know, I'd love to see that matchup. We probably will get to see that matchup. I think it's a lot of respect for SSG, in particular across North America, and I think that uh, everyone will be wary of how good they are. So nobody wants to match up with those guys. Well, we were actually fortunate enough to be able to sit down with Random Noob from Envy to get a kind of look at their set, which is going to be the bigger of the two today, although both of them being important for all of the teams involved. Random Noob, one of the better blaster players we've seen in North America, so it's going to be nice to see what he has to say as they go up against G2 in the first set. Thank you, guys. I'm here with Paulie P, the man himself, the blaster player for Team Envious. How are you doing, man? You excited about Dredge, first of all? I wanted to ask you about that. I'm doing great. Oh yeah, I'm so excited for Dredge. I I can't wait. We've been Willow was the last Blaster champion, but she wasn't like really skill intensive, I'd say, with her shots. So I think Dredge will be pretty fun. I hear you. I, I think he's gonna be pretty OP too. Really? I think he's okay. Yeah, that was my next question. After just watching like the ability reveal on the on the patch notes, what do you think I don't know, what talent are you most excited about going for on the PPL? I think that teleporter talent might be pretty nuts. I don't know. Yeah. And the and the um the they throw where he throws the harpoon, his, the harpoon yeah I think that one's gonna be pretty good too it's it's gonna be one of those two those are my guesses awesome man well it's gonna be awesome to watch Dredge come in but focusing up on this matchup with G two you've got ahead of you what was the mentality shift for Envy now I mean I know G two is, is playing with a sub but you guys are now for the first time like really firmly in first place in the online split has that changed your approach to this matchup at all are you a little bit more relaxed about going into it not really to be honest we kind of take every team the same like we we treat G two like we're about to you know. Are we sorry? We treat Splice like we're gonna play G two. We play G two yeah. like we're gonna play Splice. No matter who we play, we're we're trying to be as prepared as we can. Come into it not like keep our you know foot on the pedal the entire set, not let them back into it at all. But I think 
even with them having flame i think flames are playing really good this season so we're not you know we're still going into it like right. expecting them to be g2 you know they're g2 and just to, uh, team. you know to bring up playing splice versus playing g2 what are your thoughts on splice those guys look like they have made serious improvements and what is it about that team what have they done differently this split for you uh, I don't know. I think they're just meshing. Well, I mean, they've been a team together now for a while, so I think it's starting to come together a little bit. And I think they're just playing really well and, you know, adapting yeah. to what the meta throws at them. Awesome. <laughs> well, good luck in your games today, Paul. It's always good to see you. All right. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. See you later. What's up? How we doing, ladies and gentlemen of the Palins Premier League viewership, Mixer, and live.skillshot.com. My name's Randy. That's Gormizer. We almost That's did a full logo. 180 right there, and that is the logo. That's Androxus. And this is, uh, I think that's from Realm Royale. I have died a lot on that bridge. That is a dangerous bridge, except I don't know if it connects that way. Either way, uh, we do know that the connection that you guys are here for is the PPL to your browser. So let's get into it. But right now, though, we got to let you know that the HRX tickets are on sale. They will be for a while. I guess all the way up until the show or until they're sold out. And so that means you need to get your tickets now. HighResExpo.com to do the thing. It's going to be a very fun weekend. Obviously, all our Paladin Smite content. Yeah. And of course, you might even want to take off the Monday because there's going to be an after party as well. A lot of fun to be had there. A wonderful video. Whoa, whoa. Also, only $50. What are you looking to get into, Gore? Laser tag. You need a whole day to recover. Drinks, bowling. You mean tea? Arcade. Kombucha? Please. Water. Water. All right. Oh. Well, it's uh, it's a good day to be a Paladins viewer because you got the standings in front of you that say, well, things aren't exactly secured at the top. In V and G2, they are going to be battling as our first set starts in just a few moments. And they are really a 3-0 away. If they were able to do it, it would tie it up in terms of head-to-head, -head, map differential, and the rest of the split would be able to determine who would take first. But, of course, Envy, with a win here, would most likely, and I think definitely, barring catastrophic uh, results next week, secure themselves that first seed in North America. And that's where, I mean, if you look at it again, it was 13 for Envy, 10 for G2, very close up there. And then the next was negative four. Like, there is a huge gap between the next two. So this is going to be all four, f like, first seeding going into HRX. Both these teams have the bye. They are going to be there. But can they confirm themselves as the number one right. overall from North America? So far for G2, it's been kind of hit or miss as to whether you're number one and successful on land. Yeah. Well, now it's time to see if they can deal with it. Look at that. G2, they don't want to give it up. Nick was right on the money there. Immediately banned the Drogos and a Frog Isle to boot. So something's going to have to change here. Both snipers banned on the side of Envy. That means Makoa is open. So is a con, and they're going to go for the con. Well, G2 Esports now have a time to respond. What do you think it's going to be, Gore? They go for the Willow. And Nara's here, too. See, I'm actually really intrigued Makoa over Anara. by Willow. Just because I feel like this is not a map Willow's known for. You know what I mean? Like, sure. this is one where it's like... This is, if you have a budget Drogo's call for Willow, this is budget Drogo's Willow because it's one for Drogo's. Sometimes we've seen Bomb King, but I mean, even Victor, I feel like, has had a little bit more of a blaster presence on Frog Isle overall than what we've seen out of Willow. So if they play it well, I think it's going to be great. But like you said, they forego their Anara. Are they good with Victor here? I mean, I'm just looking down the line, right? Because they take the Willow. I think they're worried that maybe they have the hit scan pressure from the Leon to deal with it because the snipers are banned out. So there it is. It's the victor. I was going to say, Envy seemed real confident to prioritize the Inara instead of grabbing the Leon and also grab the Cassie instead of that. So now you would expect that that victor is going to be the main threat against the Willow who is in the sky. Fernando last picked for G2. Victor, honestly, is a big threat on this map. This is one of the few maps I think that yeah. Victor is going to be, hands down, a solid DPS. Like, you can always rely on him. Yeah. And so picking him up, having him with Cassie, I think makes Envy have a very, just really good lineup. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot is relying on the Willow, whereas Envy kind of win that frontline battle just sustain-wise, no doubt about it. Who do you think is going to win? Envy and G2, the poll is in, I guess, your chat right now. Yeah. So make sure to go ahead and answer it as we begin this best of five set. First of three takes home all the money. Frog Isle, map number one. This has a lot on the line for these two. Frog Isle is a very polarizing map. You can find four O's on it pretty quickly if you know what you're doing or if you just get a better draft or you catch the other team off guard. But between these two, 
you never truly know where it's going to go. Tolkien and Nara Rubu on the con, though, is a scary sight if you are G2, but Cuss piloting the Fernando is just as scary. Random noob on the Cassie, he could definitely do it. This is a map we've got so many clips from him, except on the Drogos being a highlight player. I have no problems that he feels comfortable dominating on this map. Early grenade here could be the tail, but in fact, he's going to go straight on to the point with his damage. Josephs, Cuss, looking to push the uh, envelope there on a Tolkien. And Mr. Hayes finds Bodies, who gets a little too involved. Maybe a little bit of a bait there, thinking they could kill the Inara that early. And Rock Monkey, I mean, one of the guys that has been just touted because of how uh -oh. great his aim can be. Being able to find a lot of push damage on that. 17 health still alive somehow right now. The shots from McCor are not connecting. He's going to get a little bit of a heal, and that's actually going to turn around and do a kill on the dose -ups. Evil Eye, though, finds a big kill on a rock, and they get Random Noob, and so Cuss still alive. It was a flank that was just a little bit more premeditated by the side of G2. They had this aggressive nature, and Bodies is able to be back. No damage dealers to support the front lines means that the front lines not going to be able to touch the point just yet. The one thing about the front lines coming from G2 is that not only are they aggressive, but considering the rest of the draft from everybody in the game, they're the only two that can really consider flanking on this map, getting that aggressive that quickly. Willow, Leon, you're not going to see them jump into your face. That's not the fight they want to take. Same thing goes for oh pretty much my. everyone on Envy. Oh my, Tolkien just gets deleted there. Doseps able to find that one. Rubu now firing. He's got the hit scan pressure from Khan. I think they thought that might have been enough, but Rock Monkey says, no, no, no. This last pick, Victor, was for a reason. Get him out of here. Evil Eye goes down, and now Rubu has the overpower. G2 Esports with 99, but this is a dangerous proposition going back against the Khan, who is ready to throw you off the map. Well, it's online for him, like you said, and that is perfect for trying to get rid of one angry dose-ups that might be coming down trying to reclaim that, but 99% is a big number to fight against. A beautiful hook on the side, and there's going to be the overpower to actually use for drop bodies just yeah. to get this Leon out of there. And it's honestly a great call, and now here's the problem. G2 Esports didn't go back soon enough, so they can't fully drop back. They can't leave this uncontested. The shield comes down. The Immortal from Cus is charged up faster than the Ancient Rage, which tells you a little bit how Cus has been doing and how Dosefs has in managing his damage. There's a nice Solar Blessing as well. Going to keep Khan alive dip in dip out what's it all about dosips the turtle will go back into his shell envy retake the objective and now grab point one here on frog isle and a lot of that was on the back of that first kill from rock monkey a lot of pressure coming down from the victor and even though he has to play a little bit further back the same way we're going to see cassie leon and willow play here He's going to have a lot longer range damage, especially if he can hit these long range grenades he keeps tossing out, because that is a good chunk of damage. It's one of the things about Victor that gives him that duality. Partial blast damage, partial single target damage. Yeah, absolutely. It's a great point. Not often mentioned just the way to mitigate these things. We're starting to see Havens built up a little more. And Meta's past. They were prioritized as the first item. They kind of felt back. Now probably right back there is a big first or second item for these damage dealers who get in these types of duels all the time. But how you build can be the key. Mr. Hayes trying to get away from that seed link. There's the Pyre Strike just to stay alive. He knows he's there. He saw the damage number. He's going to find the healer. That's a good little bit of pressure applied by Evil Eye, but he's going to go down as a result. It's a good stagger, nice but the only problem I have with it is that G2 aren't really claiming much oh ground. They're not no claiming way. much more, and Cuss is so no low. Way. It takes one hit, but he's getting heals right now. He's going to dance around inside that gourd. And even though the Solar Blessing comes through and it keeps everyone alive on Envy, save for Random Noob, it's not enough to keep Cuss alive forever. That was some insane outplay there by Cuss, but he may have just made a bad problem worse because he goes down now, and Rubu with Envy having Mr. Hayes back and supporting him is even more dangerous on this con. The overpower made the difference in round one, and we're seeing that these little min-max moments, whether you get the value from the overpower or not, makes the difference in the points. Nice hook attempt there, but he's not going to be able to get that job done. It steps right back into the Solar Blessing, and he got the Firing Line shout to be able to heal him up. Up Cuss is there with the Flame Lance, and that's going to be enough to at least secure the kill onto the front line. Double kill for Cuss. He doesn't care what he's playing. He's going to carry as best he can. Tolki goes down as well. Rock Monkey pretty much left, not necessarily on his own, but definitely on an island that maybe he doesn't want to be on as Victor going to fall back along with Mr. Hayes. Stay safe for the next, I want to say 20 seconds, 15 seconds, right? Let the team regroup. You can already see Rubu Tolki coming back. They're going to be mounted up, ready to get in here. And they just have to figure out what approach they want to take to get back onto the payload and try to push it because it's going to go to overtime. It certainly is. Unless you can see something fantastic happen here. Rubu, wow, That's finding good one. so much damage. But in the back line, 
I drop bodies and evil eye combined to just burst down random noob. As we had mentioned, he had so many highlights here on this map, but hasn't really looked a threat today. It's really been more about how Rock Monkey has found evil eye and how bodies is really yet to wake up as well. The two matching each other here. The lady heroines who could play savior or obviously play disappointer for both squads. Headshots mid-air. I mean, that's just... Wow. Being able to find him, Evil Eye, while he's floating around in the skybox. It's this awkward moment. Whereas, Victor, you're doing a lot. Like, Rock Monkey has done a lot of work this game. 9, 2, and 6. He's sitting at the top of the damage chart, which is difficult to do against a blaster like Willow or Drogos. Yeah. So he's up there, topping Evil Eye. But his team still feels unpressured. And a lot of that comes down to the next slash line down. The 1, 6, and 7 Cassie is not hitting anywhere near as hard. And granted, you can say a lot of those kills, that's 8 out of the 9 that Rock Monkey have been able to pick up. But where are the rest of them? I mean, Rock Monkey's sitting at 15 total. Where's the rum gone? Great question. I know a few people who have asked that one myself. Maybe the real question is, where is the noob gone? Evil Eye, we know where he is, or at least Rock Monkey does. The tracing is impeccable, but now I drop bodies, just an avalanche of damage. No way to stop that one. I cuss Cutie as well, finding Mr. Hayes. Enlightenment, I like it, just keeps bodies alive. That's all you need, baby. Vex gives him the healing. The snake finds his way into the ritual magic to support his teammates staying alive, but oh no, that's a Fernando gone down, and Tolkien about to barrel onto the objective. Being able to find it, Tolki is taking Unless, a ton of damage here, not uh, finding any shots. Drop bodies takes him from pretty much full to none as he just finds that box on the ramp. And I mean, at this point, Envy is locked in their base. What are they going to do? Absolutely nothing. That is absolutely a dominant point fight there. G2 Esports feels like they just get a, a little bit better than they tried beforehand. They both sent Cuss and Doe into the back line, using the front line, the pressure, the ultimate threat of the Fernando and the immortal Makoa when he gets into that 10,000 HP Ancient Rage in form. But the hook has been isolating Tolki again and again and again, and he's becoming a little bit more, uh, I guess, susceptible to that with the death and taxes Leon following shortly behind. Pressure, pressure, pressure. That is G2's entire round. Like, this has just been, can we lock Envy down? And Envy are now behind bars. This overpowered is going to give a lot of breathing room, though. Either you kill off dose ups, you can throw them away. Either way, you're going to get at least a little bit of pressure pulled away from you. Now you've killed Cuss. Frontline's gone. G2 can't hold up and maintain the way they have been. Envy let the breath loose and move forward. Wow. Can we just take a look at some of the, is he running morale boost or something? I mean, he looked like he was getting a second First shot, and he is, he is morale boost too. It looked like every bullet he hit, he was getting a percentage. If you could just hit some bullets, Rubu, <laughs> that would be really awesome from my conversation here. Uh, it, it was, he's getting a percentage of, of his ultimate charge. I mean, that's insane. That is some ridiculous. Look at that. I mean, pretty much every single time he shoots a bullet, he's going 33, 34, 35. That is a huge deal, and no wonder he's had so many overpowers when he's needed them. And being able to have that, we've argued that that is probably one of the hardest ults to charge in the game. It is also one of the hardest to deal with on the side of G2. You pretty much have to pop Ancient Rage, pop an Immortal. Like, you have to be prepared for it to happen. And if Rubu keeps getting them as fast as he's been getting them, then you don't have the ability to combat Look that. I mean, already, at he's that. catching up to them. Look at that. Watch his ultimate while he fires. Watch it. Every time he hits a shot, it is ridiculous. The only thing that's going to stop him, though, is when he can't use any of his abilities as well. Doesn't get the heal. Rock Monkey stays alive. Pretty big deal. But G2 Esports feel like it's all quiet, like an old Western movie, and the town's empty. And you just know there's got to be a bad guy in the saloon somewhere. Evil Eye firing away with the wand, but this fairy isn't ready to take flight. Only 54% charge on her ultimate, but guess who's at 86%? Rubu. That's a shell spin. This is a Rubu who's going to die. Nice shot to the dome. Now Tolki out in front. G2 Esports looking to push this one through. Tolki doing whatever he can to dance around this wall. He's got cover, at least for most of G2. And he's trying to focus down dose ups. That's the second time I think I've seen him solo seismic crash to try and kill off the turtle. This time it works out for him, but he's still taking a ton of damage, but they push him back. Dose and getting, that's the goal. Boz was getting bullied, as you mentioned. I mean, just absolute, I think, threats all across the board for him. Khan, nice. use it mid round, has it once more. Rubu's being willing to use this ultimate, but. It's also being very tactical as to making sure it's back in the point fight when it matters. Evil Eye has been on point with dead zones this yeah. entire game. And that's kind of the bane of Envy's existence, right? 2-9-11, 12-4-12. The damage dealers are either there or they're not. 
But the other factor, and that's something I really wish we could see, but it's really hard to say how much healing did you not get because <laughs> it's any healing that you're healing not receiving not at the time. Got. But Evil Eye is shutting down. If Rubu gets caught in it, then he just can't battle shout, at least not to give him anything you know, beneficial in terms of health. It's going to still get the damage, still CC immune, but not a lot of healing. And the same thing goes for Tolkien. So Mr. Hayes's job is either well, find that outside of the dead zone or try to work around it. You know who is healing? Vex. He's leading the damage charts, uh, healing charts by a mile, but he's also deathless. Hasn't died. No one's been able to get the Maldamba. Rubu now isolates Cuss, and Evil Eye knows that Rock Monkey's looking for him through that scope. Firing line, battle shout from the Primus of House. Iko, Rock Monkey finds the fairy, and now Evil Eye having used that. Has traded pretty much ult for ult, but gotten nothing in return. Vex forcing to heal him up now, and that's just a mistake of a seedling. Doesn't quite get over the ledge. He'll want that one back. That's a lot of burst that's no longer on the table. Dead zone going to be able to go out. You're dealing Good. with Tolkien. You're dealing with the point, and that's actually beautiful. That's one of the things we've seen Willows either forget or forego with their team, and that allows G2 to get aggressive. Tolkien pushed back. Now the control's back in favor of G2, but it's 48 to 15, 48 to 18. G2 need to be able to hold on to it longer. Oh, losing bodies, losing dough does no. not help. Oh, and this is a problem. This is a problem. Vex is going to slither through on that one. Wants the best of his abilities to just get away. But you know what? He may go down. That's a 19 streak. Oh, no. And they gave it to the Inara. They gave it to the Inara. That 19 streak, 91% now charged up on the ultimate. This is Team Envy looking to close this one out. Dosips had the Ancient Rage core, which is why I said, oh no, at the start of that. And he just couldn't get it off. He died too fast. And will that have been the deciding factor here on map one? As Envy are 3-2 and looking to push this through. Push and pull so far throughout the entire game, trying to push the payload as it is now. 300 credits above where G2 will be overall just from objective capture. But kills have been going back and forth between these two teams. Ults right now going to be even, coming online a little bit more for Envy. But will they be ready to pull the trigger to try and make this a 4-2? Honestly, with the way things have been going, I wouldn't be surprised to see them get that aggressive. I, I absolutely think that they're going to try to win here if they can. I think an overpower is going to make it real obvious whether they can win. That's one of the best things about this ultimate. You know, they've been maxed these situations so well that they've put themselves in a, in a pretty easy spot. I think that's going to do it. Honestly, I mean, what do you do here? Tolkien just got the Solar Blessing. Mr. Hayes is alive. If you find bodies here, and you get an overpower, Cus can go off the map. I don't know if they're going to hit the gas, though. This isn't even necessary. Jeez. You don't even need to hit the overpower, and you block the shield as well. Immortal forced away. Joseph's Ancient Rage. This is looking horrible for G2 Esports and fantastic for Team Envy to finish off the game. Holds are being used just to try and stay alive, and it's not working out for the front lines. G2 are getting taken down. Cus still has five seconds until he's back. Evil Eyes in the air. There's only so much you can do with this much hit scan presence against you. And you know what? There's Joseph's. Hello, Turtle. You've used your Ancient Rage. You Goodbye. missed your opportunity to counter me out in the start of the point fight, and now I'm making sure you'll never get it back. Bodies, cuss, hit the floor. Team Envy, grab game number one. That felt like at the beginning, Envy's like pushing G2, like, okay, where are you at now? Like, you've got bodies back. Like, where are we really? Because right. last time we faced you, it was a walk in the park. Let's be honest with you. So they poke them a little bit, and they're like, you know, poke the sleeping bear. What's going to happen? Are you going to claw back? Or are you going to wake up? Or are you just going to lay there? Mm -hmm. G2 starts to claw back, and they're like, okay, we'll back off a little bit, give them a little bit of room. And then they remember, oh, wait, we're undefeated. Yeah. Let's keep that up. And they certainly do, <laughs> don't they? Rock Monkey, 17-4. 17 and four. He's pretty good at having that 4-1 to one KDA in these games, which is uh, pretty, pretty hard to deal with. Vex gives up his two deaths in that last four minutes. And, you know, that's going to be a significant impact whether your healer stays alive all the time. It's going to give you a little bit more of a boon. But Rubu and that morale boost con definitely showing why when picked and when accompanied by something as strong as the Inara, absolutely deadly. And, you know, something that doesn't get to come up, I think, as often for frontlines is how good their aim is. Because when you look, he, Fernando doesn't really need to aim. Makoa, he does, but you kind of feel like the cannonball is just big enough that maybe you can hit it without having to be precise. Khan is a little different, and I think Rubu showcased a lot of it. There was a lot of great overpowers, but being able to use his ult the way he did and charge it up the way he did was all because of how well he was able to shoot. I mean, it's pretty incredible the speed with which he was able to charge that up. And the bonus damage on firing line, just another boon. He allows his team to get a little bit of the elimination, help finish him off. Maybe you throw him, maybe you don't, never know, but ends up tossing him into the water. I'm really, really excited to see if G2 Esports can 
adjust. And that's where we've seen them kind of either really succeed or fail miserably. These crazy adjustments where they say, okay, let's do something wacky, but it's too wacky for even them to pull off yeah. in these high pressure moments. This is going to be a big moment of response. Envy here banning out the Makoa. G2 Esports. They ban out the Fury, and now Envy. Are you going to give up the Drogos? Will they even take the Drogos' first pick? Drogos available. G2 Esports, I have some. I have a feeling they're not going to take it. I mean, Inara's still open. Drogos is good to deal with Inara. I knew it. They're going to go for the Androxes, and that comes to map differences, right? Serpent Beach, Jaguar Falls, good maps for Androxes to run against the Drogos. I was spot but on. You have to get it right. You know what I mean? Like, we've seen this matchup, and in days of old, it was Androxus beats Drogos. Now it's Androxus beats Drogos, unless Drogos gets a really good rocket. And a lot of these players have gotten good at hitting you face on with a rocket. Yeah, I mean, they both got buffed. Drogos got buffed. It was available because now he can combat with Androxus and Flankers because of his buff to the rocket speed. Now Androxus gets buffed. He doesn't have to be as close to the Drogos, can secure some of those kills a little easier. Both of them still matching each other in terms of two kings from different countries uh, have to respect each other's power. And Nara and Fernando taken. Maldamba, Barrick, Cassie for Envy. And now Pip. Here's where we start to see some interesting stuff here. It's the Willow, but it will be Vex on that Pip. Man, our, our death segment was right on the money here. <laughs> It's right like, on the I money. Mean, these two teams G2 are... G2 say, you can have the Drogos. We'll see what happens. But <laughs> you are kind of danged if you do, danged if you don't. Yeah. Uh, because you do then give Rock Monkey and Droxus if he wants it. And I'll say right now, this is probably some of the most fun I think we could see in a set. This yep. one is going to be where everything's at. Envy were very good last game, but it was very push and pull. This definitely feels like G2, they let the things go that they want to let go. And like you said, sometimes, hey, can you call our bluff? Are you going to call our bluff? Or are we going to call your bluff? Drogos is a big factor. Yeah. You can't ignore him. Yeah. But I think Pip, Willow, Andro are all going to be huge for G2. And you know what's interesting? We see Ruckus Barrack all the time. Those are the I, I guarantee that it's 95% of the games that if there is a Barrack, that that Barrack is, well, I would say maybe 80%. Barrack and Ruckus are, are formed together, basically. They they make a pair. Now, I don't often see like a Inara Ruckus. I don't often see... Fernando Ruckus, and I understand why, but you know, you have the chance to scoop the Ruckus. And I like that on this map, especially as some extra hit scan to deal with the Drogos that you've already given up. I think that would have been a really good pick for G2. But for whatever reason, Cus feels much more confident on the Fernando, which he's been playing this entire time. So you gotta trust him. You're also getting a little extra burst just from those Rockets, which have gotten a little easier. A lot of players hit those very consistently. Oh yeah which makes it very quick to try and burn down someone, say, like a Willow, maybe a Pip who happens to take a step in the wrong direction. But G2 are trying to fight on two fronts, one on the payload, two going all the way around, looping to the back line of Envy. But they're okay to hold this area, I think. I think they really are. They've got Catwalk, Willow. I mean, this is good for G2. Envy have to make a move now. What are they going to do? They're going to send Rubu over to the left side to force Cuss into something. Bodies is getting too aggressive, and I don't know if that's the call they would have really wanted to make, and now they're in trouble. They're four against five, and they're in the back line of Envy. Now they're three versus five, and certainly there's something wrong, because this is not what G2 Esports had in mind. They have the objective, they're 45%, and their flanker is frontlining and ends up dying first. Now you're in this position, Dosip's having to hide behind a wall cuss as well. This is where you start to see the impact, whether or not Pip can hold up. Low cooldown, pretty big burst heal, able to keep front lines, especially if they group together alive. But once his attention gets diverted, Cuss is over here, and then you have a Nara over there. Who do you hit? Okay, I'm going to go for a Nara. Cuss dies. Now what do you do? You lose some pressure on the side. And that's kind of the role. Like, that's the issue that will you'll face with a Pip versus something like a Maldamba or even a Fury, where it's just your heal is just long enough that it, you can't feel confident hitting it everywhere. Well, let's have to, we have to wait and see how this all transpires because so far, so good for Mr. Noob here. He has got himself back on the catwalk now, finding these rockets. He let the Drogos on to Envy. I knew G2 were going to let it happen, but it just is one of those days where maybe, maybe Destiny will change. Maybe it won't be like the Makoas of old that land. So far, though, doesn't look to be that way. It seems like Envy with... A pretty convincing round one win, although there was a little bit of time given while they looped de looped on for Jaguar Falls. It seems like Envy have got the better end of this. A good start. They can keep up this pressure right now. No big dismounts coming through, but you don't need them. You're just trying to lock G2 back so you can get up to this archway. It's very difficult to break the base on Jag Falls unless you get a couple of kills. 
And then V, I like the way they approach it. A little bit of aggression on the right, try to force G2 over into a position where it's honestly better for you to fight. Somersault coming in big, keeping Rock Monkey alive. Not always easy to take advantage of that at 130 health. A lot of players panic and they realize, oh boy, uh, I'm dying. Let me just shoot back. Let me hide behind this rock. You, you forget your cooldown comes up right away. But when you play Cassie enough, you get a part of your mentality, I guess, of how to go ahead and interact with your environment. Random noob looking for a dragon punch, but just goes back up into the sky. Doesn't like what he sees. What I like is, and this is actually one of the factors I think we can see, the reason you don't necessarily need oh, a Drogo no. is with an ult. He just gets vision. He knows, okay, is it going to be worthwhile for me? But rockets like that, that no. stops bodies from getting aggressive. That turns that entire engagement around. Drogo's was dead to rights, except for that shock being found. And that's what you're looking to call. You say, yeah, Drogo's, you got to hit me in the rocket. Come on, I'm hunting you. I'm Androxus. And now Rubu here on this ruckus like, Give me a break. Willow, no problem. Pop the shield. He didn't even use a mitter. That's just rude, Robu. That's just rude. That was wow. dominance. Like that that is the only word for that. 4-0 oh, and 1 for Rock Monkey on the Cassie. 1-0 oh, and 4. So I'm wondering where all of Random Noob's kills happen to be going. Rock Monkey cleaning them up. But everyone, deathless round for Envy, killless round for G2. And that just begs to go into this. I mean, you have to change how you approach that beginning fight. The first thing that happened was bodies dying. Everyone started to fall after that. It was a domino effect overall. Envy were able to just tap one, and they eliminated them all. So G2 need to look a little differently. They need to play around the fact that they have Pip, and Pip on this map can be great. He heals through walls now, so it's going to make it a little bit easier to get people who are clustered. But you have to be clustered. There were three fights going on for G2 at the beginning of last round. Now four minutes and 30 seconds have gone by. It's a 2-0 for Team Envy. It's about to be if they continue this pace in about 10 minutes. Uh, we'll be looking at game three as a 2-0 for Team Envy in terms of the set. Weevil Eye up into the air, but that barricade does so much work. It blocks everything. The entire duration of that Fate Flight is pretty much ignored. Everyone just fighting in this room. This is what happened last time. Random Noob with Combustible. He's going to knock him off. Sprite Fly is going to make sure he stays alive. The damage reduction, but damage reduce. And this Dragon Punch onto the front line. Finds Evil Eye with the secondary rocket. Dosip's there. Trades lives, though, with the Dragon. And finds at least a bit of a consolation prize. But it's not enough for G2 to be able to aggress back onto the point. Team Envy looks solid. And G2 looks shaky. Comeback mechanic for G2, got him 62%. Dosips has had to use his wall defensively instead of trying to get into the point and block damage. He's going in now as best he can. He's already had 1,000 health. He's getting burned before he can even touch. 99%, Cus Cutie's gonna have to make it out and touch the objective, but I don't know. Seems like it might be better to give this up. You do have the pip, and you do have body, so anything can happen. But boy, oh boy, has this bet gone horribly wrong for G2. And boy, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is a demoralizing effort, if this is going to be something they bounce back from here in this set. It's a 3-0. It's less than six minutes gone by. And you just got to say, where do you go from here? This draft did not work whatsoever. Envy are looking insane. I mean, this is the kind of team, again, and we mentioned this in the first week of Esports Weekly, this is the kind of team you need to be in order to qualify for, can you make world championship material? Are you a team that can win it? Bring it not only back to North America, but take down the likes of Na'Vi, take down the likes of G2, who have been standing in the way. And as of right now, the answer seems to be yes. Ruby Rubu finds two. And now they're just looking for a potential 4-0 push. And this ruckus has been so detrimental. A last pick. You took the Fernando over. It hasn't made a difference. This pit. I mean, where has it been? I'm just looking at all of this. And the Hexafire, not even afraid of catching the hands back from Androxus. Finally, G2 Esports make a play here. But it seems like just more of a matter of en Envy's hubris there. To not cancel that one out. Rubu has not died in the last, I think, 15 or 16 eliminations. That was his first. Potentially in all the game. As we take a look at the KDAs, I don't know how many times Envy have died. I want to say three. That was his first <laughs> death all game. No wonder he's confident. I mean, 6-1-9, 6-1-6, 5-1-6. And the other two still having not died. You're feeling very happy if you're Envy. And plus, I mean, if you're Rubu, Rock Monkey, and Random Noob, you just went and spent the 600 credits extra you've had from these points. You're sitting very heavily ahead of G2 in terms of net worth. So control is in your favor. All you need is a couple kills, and this could seal the deal. Cuss is not looking tanky enough to be able to hold on as long as he normally would. 
Now here's the thing. Rock Monkey and Mr. Hayes. Mr. Hayes still hasn't died. Tolki with the barricade, excuse me, and the dome shield still has not died. I don't think he's gonna die this time around. Rubu back in action in the front. Envy looking out in front over G2, not by a few feet, by a mile here. Fernando, immortal, bodies, a cursed arm in the air. Rock Monkey still alive. So is Mr. Hayes, by the way, hasn't died all game, and I think that's gonna continue here as the shield melts, and so do maybe the hopes of G2 Esports in taking first place. So yesterday, or I guess two days ago, we were talking about where these teams have kind of risen, right? And you were like, well, maybe SK, Renegade, Splice have, have stepped up, but G2 and Envy also stepped up. Well, I feel like G2 stepped up to here. Envy was like, okay, we'll, we'll match and then go push a little further, right? They have gone yeah. above and beyond where they were. I think G2 Esports make a mistake that I call on the desk. They do it here. You can't hedge your bets thinking that you just can, you know, let this drug goes through and not be on your side. Yeah. This is a thing that we just don't see the Navis do. We don't see Envy do. If there's a threat that big, they get it or it's gone. And that is something that G2 are notoriously bad at. And it's the confidence that they have to bleed through, otherwise they're not G2. You know, you have to first pick Androxus for bodies, even though bodies just came back, and he shouldn't be required to carry the game right away. You should first pick for Evil Eye there, because he's been here all split, but they can't say we don't trust you, bodies, because they have to be the family. They have to trust bodies will show up big at land. This is not the smartest draft for them, that's for sure. But I think for G2 to be G2, they need to keep making these plays. They need yeah. to keep saying, we are brothers, we band up as arms, we are against everyone, and we will find a way together, or we won't find a way. I mean, they still reach into their pockets, they pull out the pip, they pull out things that are more G2, which is what Nick always says. Like, he wants to see G2 play their style. He doesn't want to see them play the norm, he wants to see them go for it. But their I think it comes down to what up. you said. Yeah, you can't give up Drogo's. Right now, in this meta, Drogo's has been hands down the best champion, I think, to pick up for your team. Not always going to win, but I don't think there's a reason. Like, it's not his fault if you lose either. Yeah. He's always going to be consistent. I'm unenthused because Random Noob on Drogos, before Drogos was an insta ban, made Drogos on Fusilod an insta ban, or you can't let Random Noob have Drogos. Everyone else, you can have one, but Random Noob can't have Drogos. And now you see MV ban Drogos. They're not going to give it up. This is what is. This is what makes me just say this, go on this little rant, because... You just never see Envy be like, all right, you sure you have Drogos. We'll see if we can deal with it. Not going to happen here. Hot take. Hot take me. Do we get to see Koga? Does he come through? Because Ice Mines, it was Splice that did it. I but wouldn't, Splice I made Koga look real good. I don't good think here. I'd like Koga here for G2. The reason being is I think it's a little too far-fetched. I think you just get to a standard draft. You take your Nara, you get your Fernando. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's a good idea. I just don't think for them now. Yeah, no, it's definitely reaching maybe that would too, get too them far back out in there. The set. I don't think that would get them back in the set. They need something stable. Leon's a great pick. And I think Ash is, uh, wow, a triple tank. So they're really trying to catch Envy off guard. They are going farther left. They're trying to get back towards the center here. Triple tank on Ice Mines. With a Ceres, by the way. Triple tank on Ice Mines with a Ceres. We've seen this before. But when I say we've seen this before, I'm thinking I've be seen bad. this in like CIS from a team that is getting stomped by B5 a year ago and they're trying their best to hold on to it. I feel like Envy have a stronger draft, but it is going to be aggressive front lines on a map that awards a lot of space. If G2 can just hold on to the point, yeah, I think they've got it. I mean, I think you guys let us know who you think is going to win. I think this is going to go the way of Envy just because of the fact that they've got the 2-0 lead and it's, it's kind of a, a long way for G2 to climb knowing they're still going to HRX. Uh, I think that this is maybe just testing some things. I think they want to try Triple Tank against a really good squad like Envy. The only thing I'd say is that you probably are looking at maybe switching out that Fernando. I think that this Ruckus is A, a little too good, and I think that as far as the Triple Tank goes, having champions like Barrack like Ruckus within your triple tank are extremely valuable because they don't really feel like tank. They don't operate yeah. like tanks. You know, Fernando has the burst in the fireball, but when outside of the fireball, he operates damage-wise like a tank, whereas Ruckus is always damage, and then he's even burst damage, like a really good damage dealer with those rockets. And it's one of those things we've always described Ruckus kind of as like a tank disguised oh, no. as a flank or a flank disguised as a tank. Whether or not it's going to work out is the big question for me. Cuss, Dosips, drop bodies, now switching on to Slugshot Ash. 
It's good. It's, you can stay alive, but this is the thing. The strategy here is we have three bodies with a big healer who can stand on the point longer than you can stand on the point. It's Ice Mine, so if we push you back just a little bit, we get the objective. Well, yeah, I mean, and that's, that's really like... Uh... That's really prehistoric of a meta. I, I think that really what we saw Navi do that was so excellent was they did not send Phoenix here. They, Phoenix was in the back line before you could start the point fight. I mean, he was he was living in their back line of Fnatic, and he was just like <laughs> checking it flanking. out. He was like doing a tax audit at, for what I saw. He was all up in their business there. And I think uh, Fnatic at the end of it were like, man, did we, did we commit tax fraud? I don't know. I mean, the way he's snooping at us, it makes me think I might have. Dosips here finds the first kill on Natolki, though, and I think this is a good way to approach this maybe new draft. A little bit of patience. And Rubu here just firing away onto Cus Cutie, who's happy to trade, who has played Fernando all of the games today, and a beautiful fireball to boot. Definitely one of the reasons why he loved this pick on this map. Being able to find Woo! it again. Look at the 700s popping in the back. Envy need to be a little bit more careful with how they're approaching this. Cus is just sitting here happily, like you said, getting so much damage for free. It's going to be 90% picked up for G2. Finally, Envy are going to start picking up a kill, but can they you snowball that into here. anything more? And there it is, G2 Esports. They grab it. So what's tried and true, proven to work, G2 Esports say, let's give it the old college try. And I think this is uh, at least a moment where Envy have to respect the fact that Triple Tank, albeit a little weird, albeit a little old, albeit not that fun sometimes, can have its place, especially on a map like Ice Mines. No one really likes getting this map selected, Gore, when you get in a casual queue, you're just trying to play for 10 minutes, you're like, Ice Mines, really? I gotta go through all that. But it's really good to have the practice in case it happens at land. At this point, with the way teams are playing this, Ash kind of fills in the same role I feel like Barrack used to. It's one of those areas where, you know, we used to call Barrack Fat Cassie. Mm -hmm. He does a lot of damage. I feel like Ash is kind of tankier Andrew. Like, there's not as much mobility for her, but she's doing a lot of the same pressure. That's kind of the style they want to go for. Get into the back line, push them back, and you're not going to die as often. That's one of the yeah. bigger things, I think, that gives them that, that bonus. That's why Drop Bodies is going to look so solid with Slugshot here. Well, with Slugshot, you also do not have to, right, be near them to do the oh, damage. Yeah. And I think that's what he's excited about. I think the other reason they're grouping together is because the Void Abides. That's the talent I was so worried about with... Uh, Vex, I think it's the right idea, but it is very susceptible to being countered out by Kinetics and by uh, this dead zone from Willow. I drop bodies. The opportunity that he's missing, though, although he is staying safe for getting more of that healing, is what Phoenix did, which forces these damage dealers like yeah. Rock and Random to look at him. They can't look at the point if there is an Ash to your left in the corridor shooting at you, and that is a big uh, re a relief for Dosips on the objective. And it feels like that's where Cus was trying to apply his pressure, but the big difference is Fernando, once he throws up his shield, his damage stops. As she throws down her shield, you still have to focus her down. Right. You still have to look her and give her that attention. So I wouldn't right. mind seeing them maybe switch places, even if Cus gets aggressive on the left side instead of the right. Just try to change it Woo! up. But if you get plays like that, you get moments like that, you don't need to worry too much about the front lines. You're killing off any damage hopes that you do have. Boy, did he try to hit that one, but... Ended up slipping and falling at the very end. Cus drops down from the Immortal. Kinetics, though, is going to mean that he doesn't get nearly enough healing to stay alive. I drop bodies is now in the back line, but it just may be a day late and a dollar short for him. Beautiful stuff there. And be able to hold. You would have loved to see a 2-0 if you were G2 there because everything that you've got falls off late game, whereas Envy, it doesn't. And I just wonder if they're going to be able to, in round two, assuming they can't push this all the way through, be able to make some adjustments here. They're going to come through and get the overtime, but I mean, Dosef is dead to rights. There's only so much an Inara can do, but standing there, they do still have front lines enabled, and this is where triple front line comes in handy. But unfortunately, you need a little bit more damage, I think, to push back all of Envy. So you're stalling it out, maybe getting some credits. Honestly, maybe giving away more credits than getting if you're G2 there. But your fight is more point-oriented. This is where you want to live. This is how you want your fights to go. Maybe if, if you trade one for one, two for one, it is going to always lean in your favor around the point because you have those bodies to replace each other, because you can just tag team who's going to stand on the objective to let someone escape, maybe a dead zone or just to fall back and let the cauterize disappear. You know, Ruckus and Barracks are just big damaging tanks. You know, they just do a lot. Point Fernando in the burst. And uh, I think if G2 had one of those top three damage slots that... Rubu, Rock Monkey, and Random Noob. I guess you have to have a, a name that starts with R to be there. Five, it's a special club. Four, uh, then they might have been able to do two, something. Four one. Master Ridings on G2 Esports.
Team Envy tries to get there, but only have three. Tolki and Mr. A is going to be lagging behind. That's okay for a support. Not so much for the front line. Maybe Tolki going to have a different plan, go a different route here to start. I'm actually surprised Tolki is the one who doesn't have it because it feels like Tolki is the one that needs to be on the point. True. Whereas Rubu is not trying to get there. He's sitting up there in the windows. He's up on the catwalk and the balcony, whatever you want to call it, waiting for Cuss to come to him, trying to win this fight right here. And you can see the team getting aggressive, but a fireball is still going to be good. But a disengage almost knocks Cuss away. And here's a little bit of a, a risky moment right here. The convergence comes through. It pulls three in. Oh, baby. Beautiful stuff from Vex. And he goes for the Ren Soul. Can't quite find the kill. Now it's G2 Esports off to the Races, they're four members low, three alive now, 75% counting. Vex gets in on the action, and the Void abides, certainly abides there. I think they're going to grab objective number two, no problem. Being able to come in, and again, this is a home for the point with triple front line is synonymous as captured. That's kind of what it goes forward. At least that's the way the equation crumbles. And for me, I mean, I'm looking at this. G2's now run it. Navi has run it. You're looking at these top teams from North America and Europe starting to pick it back up as a viable strategy. There and so go. if I'm Envy, if I'm Fnatic, if I'm these other teams, I start looking at what beat this last time? Like, what can we go forward with that was able to demolish it? And study your history. Envy was definitely in part of the teams that were able to take it down. But right now, it's not going all their way. Yeah, and I think, you know, this is the thing, you know, the way that we saw Phoenix playing, bodies can't necessarily play the same way because he's not running that Fortress Breaker. Yeah. And that is a huge deal. It's just so big that you can kind of side shuffle around it and avoid a lot of damage. And you use your Kinetic Burst, you get it right back. So you are essentially a problem that will not go away. And I think that's what bodies is doing. He's playing patiently, trying to just burst them down before he shoulder bashes in. It's a much more difficult play style to perfect and to get right. Has a little bit more, I think, high... Uh, possibilities for succeeding, but it, it takes a little while to get there. And so Cus Cutie knows that he's going to be the one leading the charge, finds a kill on the fireball. Mr. Hayes is going to go down thanks to Evil Eye as well. Another fireball from Cus, and now Tolkien's isolated. This should be a dead dwarf on the objective. Being able to find him, push forward, a minute left, and this is where timing gets very awkward for G2. If you lose a fight here, you can still come back in touch for overtime, but you are going to be at the tail end of this push. You have to get through so much of what will be Envy's defense so you need to go all in or all done right now. Willow's going to go up into the air trying to cause whatever trouble they are, but they almost kill off Rubu. They get rid of the Ruckus finally, Ooh. and it's a 4v5. And now Vex healing up a little bit. He's got the Void Abides, drops down on the low ground. Bit of a question mark here, although that dome shield certainly showing how dome-like it actually is when you put it on a higher level of ground. Tolki should die here, and no one has killed him, and he's behind his barricade, but I think someone needs to go there, and Dosips does it, but Rubu in the process Finds bodies and evil eye, doesn't even use the Hexafire. And this is the benefits of having a tank who can do so much damage. The defense most likely now assuredly going the way of Envy again. You also see the downsides of Sarah's there. Vex, tons of healing output until he has to just disappear for a second. Keep himself safe. Dead zone goes on to him. Everyone on Envy kind of separate it. They're like, pull the front lines over away yeah. and push Vex out. Force him to stop even just the little bit amount of healing. Random Noob focuses him down just enough that if Vex wants to stay effective in the fight, he has to pretty much get out of the fight first. Right. But unfortunately, you leave everyone else pretty much hanging to dry there. And when you have someone like 11, 2, and 4 from Rock Monkey, or even though it's not as impressive, 4, 3, and 10 from Rubu, the damage numbers from Envy are what you need to look at. Yeah, nearly a, a, a you know six KD right here for Rock, which is just absolutely Four, insane. Three, two, one. And he continues to impress and be a player that teams cannot ignore. You simply cannot ignore what he does. G2 Esports, last chance here. If they do not capture this objective, it looks like it will be a very, very long bus ride home, metaphorically speaking, as they go back to the drawing board how to beat MV and what to do heading into this land. Gus Cutie getting really low. This is a little bit more of a dangerous situation than he did before. Bodies moving closer, but I don't know what that's getting him. Maybe just some offensive pressure and bodies. Look at that. Finds the kill on the Rock Monkey. Rubu, though, trades out with Gus Cutie finally. 
And this is a good start for him. Evil Eye as well gets taken down by Random Noob, though. And this Ruckus is now unchained, unfettered, untethered here in the back line. Still has a shield as well. Going to be able to get aggressive. There goes Vex. Here goes Ash shortly after. You can try nice. to get away, but he's going to block you and get right back in your face. That stops G2 from having any control here. But it's only 36% here for Envy. There's plenty of time to come back, regroup. But this is where Ice Mine starts to play its toll. Takes think, time to get there, yeah. takes time to break a defense. It's going to be hard. And it's just the ah, castle of paper. One mistake on this type of map, and you just can't get back. Cuss doesn't have the immortal. It's a matter of time before he goes down. The shield can only do so much. Dread Serpent here to secure it. And oh, Envy. Oh, G2, heart fans. Fans, hearts breaking everywhere. It just is looking like now a very tough road for them to defend against this onslaught of damage and this pressure from Envy. And it kind of feels like Envy flipped a switch. They looked at what G2 are trying to accomplish, and they just matched it. They finally said, okay, this is what we need to do. This is how we break it. You lose a couple members in the process. It doesn't go as cleanly as you want. You end up losing Rock Monkey very early on, but it's because of that split pressure from G2. You pulled people not only away from the point, yeah. but stopped looking at each other. They stopped living the family life, started looking at a fight on multiple fronts, and it just does not go their way. You could see what they were going for, but Envy just were prepared every step of the way. And so much of this conversation, because so much of these risks taken are on the side of G2, but so much of the excellence and the force yeah. of the risks from Envy, they've been phenomenal. You can't really doubt that. Every player across the board, Tolki, like a dad to this team, Rubu as well. Although I'll forgive you for duo queuing with Click You in my casual games, Rubu. Shouldn't be allowed. I should be able to play Paladins in peace here. You have done excellently on the Ruckus and the Khan. Random noob, I mean, who cares about Drogos when he can do this well on the Willow? Mr. A's been nearly deathless again in this game, and Rock Monkey, what can you say about him? I mean, 6 KDA, that should say it all. I mean, at this point, Cuss has literally no health bar as far as they are concerned on the side of Envy. This, again, feels like dominance. The point capture going the way of G2, but the thing that has made Envy so strong is their ability to adapt on the fly. Who would have thought? Navi, Fnatic? Sweet. NVG2, sweet. Right now, I think teams are less concerned about what they're doing here in these top placements and more concerned about the land coming up. However, I don't want to take away from this moment. This is what Envy have been working so hard for ever since becoming a land winner. They've yet to claim that first spot in the fine, in their online season, beating G2 Esports. And I think this is going to do it. This is assuredly going to make uh, them the number one team out of North America. I mean, it comes up to... When you come in today, there's kind of like two scenarios for Envy, right? You win as a 3-0 or you win as a 3-2. Like, they're, they're winning no matter what. Yeah. At least I think that's their thought process. Honestly, maybe if you've been watching the PPL, it's probably your thought process as well. Healing numbers go the way of G2. But there was just so much about that draft that hinged on perfect execution. Things like threats making it all the way to Vex were not allowed to happen. The minute Vex has pressure put onto him, that composition starts to fall apart. The healing disappears, triple front lines, they're not standing with each other, the Void Abides is not splashing around, Yeah. so it doesn't matter. One dead zone hurts the Void Abides so much because you're counting on the splash heal in an AoE, but that's exactly where the anti-heal goes as well. This clip right here was kind of fun. Evil Eye tried to say hello. Rock Monkey closed the door on his face and hit the spray as well as he continued to find damage efficiency all across the board. This is that first point fight that did go right and a uh, second point fight excuse me and it was really because of a convergence that bought evil eye time but aside from vex hitting that there really was more of a stalemate victory versus an actual true fight victory and this was the one dosif just got caught out guard and rock monkey was able to make it back in time to then snowball the rest of that fight g2 forgot the golden rule don't let envy have cassie <laughs> Rock Monkey is ridiculous with well, these champions. You can't give them Leon. You can't give them Cassie. Can't really give them Shaolin. You can't give them. I mean, you can't give them pretty much any DPS. Yeah, I agree. He's deadly. And you know what? You could say that about every single person on Envy. Good point. And that is why they're so good. Don't give Rubu Khan. Don't give Rubu Ruckus. Yeah. <laughs> Rubu turned into Rude Boo with Ruckus. Okay. And I think at this point, who was? What, what was he? he was Block Boo as he uh, dashed through and made sure that. 
the Ash couldn't get through. He was everything, Boo. He was, you know, I think a sweetheart for all the players watching, all the fans watching, and definitely for us to watch an exciting, exciting performance from him. MVP for the set goes to Rubu. But we, still, we do have another game coming up after this, ladies and gentlemen. The PPL isn't over, but that should decide first place. Now let's take a look at the second matchup right after this break. <laughs> 